So the first time the tweet. Control G. Yeah, you Windows users, interrupt me. And you other Windows users who know what's going on, give the answer, please. It's in the book, but I like looked it up at the time and then promptly forgot. So I'm going to actually grab the book and like go here. So thank you, thank you. Ah, yeah. So the way that worked was I, I went down to 4501, and then I held down Shift. And on Windows, you would hit Control. On Mac, you hit hold Command. And then you hit Up. And that's going to bring you, that would, in your case, bring you up to cell like A151. And then I hit down one time to highlight just to 152, holding Shift the whole time. That highlights the whole region I want selected. And then you paste. The other way to do it is to go down to A52, 152, and just select there, and then hold down Shift and like scroll with your mouse all the way down to A4501, and then click again, and then you get the region selected. Yes, you'll see it in just a second. But the way this is going to work is I've now repeated every tweet 30 times, right? And I'm going to pull out, first time I see it, pull out word one. Second time I see it, pull out word two. Third time I see it, pull out word three, all the way down, until I pulled out every word from the tweet. At max 30 words. In this case, that's true. I mean, you only have 140 characters. If, if you were feeling really bullish, you could add more, and it wouldn't matter. Because what we're going to do is once we run out of words, we'll just put in a period or something, and then we'll strip it out later. So how do I know where the first word is? How do I know where the second word is, et cetera? Well, I put all these spaces in here to do just that, right? There are spaces now between all my words. So let's look for the spaces. Space position. For the first 150 tweets, we're just going to start at zero, OK? And we're just going to say the first word starts at character one. So let's just say there's a phantom space before that at character zero. OK? I'm going to copy that down through cell 151. OK? Now I've got a bunch of zeros. So where's the second space? I'm going to use find. What am I going to find? I'm going to find a space. That's quote, space, quote, within text here. So I'm now I'm looking one column to the left. And then it's got the start number. Well, I want to start after the previous space. So that's back up for, for A152. That's back up first time I saw the tweet, which is row two. Space position from the previous one plus one, right? So start right after the previous space. Where's the next space? So find, look at the previous space position, and look at the tweet to my left, and do one after the previous space position. So let me go down to where that's zoomed in so you can see it. It's right there. Find. Quote, space, quote. So the left, first position was back in B2, plus 1. 7. That makes sense, right? Because brackets with blog in it, that's, that first word there is six letters long. So my second space then is at, space, is at 7. Now I can just take that formula, double click the bottom right corner, and bam. I now have found the next space, and the next space, and the next space, and the next space, all the way down. But we get some errors. When do we get errors? We get errors when we run out of spaces, right? So what are we going to do? Well, let's plop in something to handle them. And what we'll do is we'll just say it's the, just kind of like we said, 0 is the first space. We'll just say the length of the tweet plus 1 will be the last space when it's over. Okay, so that'll just be like a nice quick fix for that. So let's go back up to cell A151 here. B151, 152, right here. And all we do is we wrap it in an if error, put in the length, which is LEN, of the cell to my left, A152. Done. And then we just copy that down. Double click the bottom right corner. Now all of a sudden, everything is pretty great. So now 
I want to extract words. So how do I do this? Well, start back up at the top here. Let me, let me make column A smaller. This is getting on my last nerve. Oh my gosh, you're too wide for my screen. How am I going to do? Oh, I made you really wide. Ha ha. Boop. All right. Words. There's this function called mid. I can actually say, go over to my previous tweet here. And I want you to, that'll be the text, start number. I want you to start right after the space, right? So B2 plus 1. Number of characters. It's going to be the next space position, 7 here, minus the previous space position, that's 0 here, and minus 1. Because, for instance, if I've got 0 and then my next word starts at 7, that's Six letters in between, so that's seven minus zero minus one would be six. And so it's going to grab blog letters one through letter six, and that's a word. Now I can just double click and copy that down, but we're going to get some errors. And you'll see them start to crop up. <laughs> Let me make sure I type that one in right. It's a good thing I have an instruction manual here. This is the fun part of this course. Yeah, even I need to look at the book. So if I have an error, what can I do? Okay, that's how this works. This was supposed to be link plus one. Sorry, y'all. It comes at the the last space should come at the right after the tweet's over. So rather than link, it was supposed to be link plus one. Now I'm gonna get errors, right? Go errors. What? Do I really just get spaces? Oh. Links plus one. Yep. Minus one. Aha. Yeah, that's exactly right. I actually spoke it out loud and wrote down the wrong thing. Thank you. Boom. There they are. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So here's the formula. Now that we have it right, I'll act like I know what I'm talking about. I want to look, this function mid essentially takes a string and grab some section from it, right? And so you provide it a starting place and a length. So I've got, okay, let me, let me click in it so that it looks a little bigger here. And click over here. Look at the cell to the left. So now I'm looking back at A2. I'm going to start at space position plus one, so that's one after the, the current space position. And I'm going to go the length of the word, which is the next space position, minus the current one, minus one. And so I had plus in there. I should have had minus. I, and because I had them together, I got screwed up. Copy that down. Now, I've got all these errors when I kind of run out of words. That's how we know we're doing right. So basically what's happening is the previous space position and the next one are the same. So there's nothing there to grab. And because there's nothing there to grab, it just gives me an error. So in that case, 
Let's just put a period. If error, toss in a period. Let's wrap it in this if error parentheses. Put a comma and then a period at the end there. Copy that down. Now when I scroll down, when I run out of words, you just see periods start to appear. And then by the time you hit the bottom, lordy, it's all periods. Okay? That's how I know I've run out of words. It's all periods. One other thing on this sheet. Let me calculate the length of every word. We're just going to drop short words, right? So, length. And this is just equals len and then the word. Okay? So, blog is six letters long. Double click that, send it down. Periods, one letter. Those are all going to get dropped because I'm going to drop everything under three. This is where the magic starts to happen. But before we do that, let's actually copy these formulas over to our other tab. We don't have to retype anything. Just um, basically, we're going to start down here at D. Actually, we can just copy, yeah, start at D152. And then we want to go through column B here and just grab all that stuff that we typed out. See it all there? We're going to go over to other tokens and we're going to paste it in, right? Now, one of the problems here is we didn't copy these down. Maybe you did. I did not. So, I'm going to copy them down using the same go to. Go to manual tokens. No, I don't want that. Just want to be on this sheet. A4501. I'm going to jump down. I'm going to paste them here. And then, what we copied over, we can just double click this, send it on down. And all of a sudden, we get the same thing on this tab, too. Okay? Ahura. Look at all these fun words in here. Day, 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 may, may, may. Okay. Great. And then we get a bunch of periods at the end. So everything looks good on this tab. Let me know if you get something that looks funky. All right. So now, here's one of the things that we have that's going to be an issue. Words are now going to appear over and over and over again, right? The word mandrel app might appear over and over and over again. We want to count up how many times it's appearing. So how do you do that in Excel? Use a pivot table. Um, if you haven't used a pivot table, it's basically just like a SQL query in Excel. And so the way it works, and these are great. If you haven't used one, you're in luck. Because this is going to change your life. I'm just going to select column C and D. Just the words that are appearing. We're, we're back now on the Mandrel Tokens tab, right? So these are the words that are showing up over and over and over again. I'm just going to total up. Like, okay, we've got the word blog. I can see it happen twice there. I want to count up how many times it happened. So I'm going to highlight columns C and D, and I'm going to insert a pivot table. Um, I'm not sure where these are in Windows. Where are they at in Windows? Okay. So on Mac, yeah, just click the data column. First thing I insert, and it's going to create a new tab. So we called it sheet three. I'm going to call it like um, mandrel token probabilities or something. Mandrel token prob. Okay? And I want to do a couple of things with this pivot table. Um, pivot tables, you can select filters, column labels, row labels. What we care about is filtering. We're going to filter on length because we're going to get rid of short words. So I'm going to put that in the filter section, drag it down. And then row labels, I want the words. And then I'm going to grab words again, and I'm going to put it over here in values. And you'll see it immediately defaulted to count of. That's count of words. So now when I look at this thing, let me zoom in, you're going to see some interesting stuff. We've got some words here like tiny letter, count of one. Let me actually make that first column a little bit shorter so you can see this stuff. Let's keep zooming down. Automatico, count of one. At, count of 20. Lots of links. Python, that's an interesting one. Count of two for about the app. I bet you anything that's going to be a count of zero for other. I don't think there's a Python in Mega Man, but there could be. Rails. OK. 
kind of one that's probably due to Ruby on Rails. Right? So one thing I want to do after I've created this pivot table, under length, which I made a filter here, I'm drop it down, I'm going to unselect length 0, length 1, and length 2, and length 3. So I'm just getting rid of some of the garbage, right? And now I've got longer words. You see I didn't strip out all of the punctuation, so some of it remains. We'll live. That's fine. Okay. Cool. So now I've got all these words. So down at the bottom, I've got a grand total, right? It actually summed it up for me. We now have a bunch of words in the sum of all those counts, 1587. So then what's the probability of Zapier given that I'm tweeting about an app? It's 1 out of 1587. But like I said, I'm going to add 1 to everything, right? That was something I said earlier. How are we going to do that? We're going to add a column here called add 1. And then I'm just going to copy it down. I just added 1 to every count. So I've got to create a new sum here. Boink. 2410. So now my probabilities have all been adjusted. Probability for Zapier now is going to be 2 out of 2410 as opposed to 1 out of 15, whatever. You get a totally different number? You wanted me to show which part? Oh, the, the builder? So I've got length as a report filter. Words is row labels, and count of words is values. Make sure that's not a sum. Make sure it's a count. Count of words. Cool. You just point it at the, the previous count, which is in column B, and just add one. Like here, it's for me. Oh, and in Windows, I think your pivot table starts in another row. It might start on row four as opposed to row five. That's a nice little Windows Mac version difference because they're great like that. I got it now. Multiple items. I guess I selected that one. Once you select. Oh, oh. Um, I selected. I I I selected all and then got rid of three, two, one, and zero. All the short words. Just dumped them. I tightened everything up. Oh yeah, Boop. we can we can get rid of that too if you want. <gasps> Let me move this up. Got rid of blank. Summing up these twenty four ten. Cool. So probability of word given app. Okay, so what is that? It's this guy here divided by the total 0. 0.0008. Make it bigger. Right? I want to copy this down. This is going to be our first absolute reference of the day. For those of you who don't know, absolute references are things where I copy them and they don't move. Excel defaults to when I copy something, all the cell references move with it. That's how we've been doing everything, right? When I copy any formula down, it immediately refers to the one to the left because everything is relative references. But now I'm calculating this probability is this count here divided by my total, which happens to be in cell C828 in my workbook. I don't want the C828 to move. So I'm going to do a dollar sign in front of the 828. And that's going to say, hey, in this formula, that stays the same always as I copy this down. So when I copy it down now and I go to the bottom, lo and behold, down at the bottom it's C827 divided by C828. So that 828, that denominator, has not moved in its reference. This is pretty cool. Hey, look at this word, with. Huge count. What's this word here? WordPress. Oh, that's kind of a cool one. Look at that, 7 out of 2410. So WordPress, its probability is like way higher than just ordinary words. That's kind of cool. Those are the words that are going to make this model work. Okay. 
Uh, basically, we added one because, and you'll see this, when we arrive later at using the model, we're going to use it on this tab. These are our test tweets here. I got 20 of them. There are going to be words here, think of like a, a handle on Twitter. There are going to be words here that we will have never seen before. And we need to give them a probability. I don't want to, so the, the thing you might think to do is say like, okay, while the word was not here, I'll give it a count of one. But that's not fair to the ones we actually have seen ones. So I made them twos, and then I made the twos threes, and I made the threes fours, etc. So that when I come to a rare word later on, I can give them one out of 2410, and it will be somewhat fair. And the reason I want to do that is because if I gave them zero, then the whole product would just zero out, and the model wouldn't work. The other thing you could do in a model is just ignore rare words. You can do that too. The reason why you probably don't want to do that is because certain words are only going to be rare for one class, in which case they're very valuable, right? So I could have the word like, I don't know, Mario Puzo. And in one class, I may have seen that 10 out of 2,000 times. In another class, I've seen it zero. I don't want to just completely destroy my model on one side. So I'm just going to give it a 1, and over here I'll give it an 11. And then I can make a valid comparison. Well, valid-ish. It's kind of hand-wavy math. That's what I really like about this model. Every single step is kind of just a ghetto hack. This is like the hackiest AI model I think I've ever seen, um, which makes it kind of fun. So I've done it here for these mandrel token probabilities. Let's do it on the other side. That's one of the fun things about the spreadsheet. We get to do everything twice. So I'm going to highlight column C and D on other tokens. There's a different number of words here, so you'll notice that my sum is going to be in a different row. Brings the builder back up. Let me zoom back in, 150%. OK. I'm going to filter on length again. Well, let's get rid of it as a column. Filter on it. Words. Count of words. OK. So now we're kind of back where we're at here. Under filter, I'm going to deselect 0, 1, 2, 3. Tighten everything up a bit. Column C, add 1, point at column B and add 1 to it. Copy that down. I'm going to unselect the blanks, just like we did last time. We've got probability of the word, given that we're not tweeting about our application. It's going to be 2, in this case, it's going to be the previous cell, C5, divided by the total. This is down in this cell, but I haven't filled it in yet. Let me go fill that in. So I've got my previous sum. In this case, it's 1221. It's a different, different count of words than previously. Sum it up. After I add one to everything, it's 2027. Oh, yeah, let me rename this sheet, too, while we're at it. I'm going to call this other token probability. Now I've got... This cell, in, in column D here, ah, let me zoom in, sorry guys, probably can't see that. Column D here, I'm going to point it at this add one column, C5, divided by the sum down at the bottom, 811, get a probability, 0. 0.0009. I'm going to put an absolute reference in front of that 811, so that when I double click it, I've got all these probabilities, right? So. I can see them all here. Yep, and that's what we're going to do. So let's log everything. Let's see what this does. So now it's going to be LNP, as we'll call this column, right? The log of these probabilities. So in Excel, to log everything, you just use the LN formula, point it at the previous column. So now all of a sudden, 0. 0.0008 becomes negative 7. Right? And you can see all those here. This is really great because, oh, and when I copied things down and hit these two columns, oh, those can just stay empty. This is really cool because if I were to multiply a lot of these together, I'm going to have so many zeros that Excel's just going to vomit. But now, instead of multiplying these together, I can sum these. And that's the exact same thing. 
These are not probabilities, but remember, what am I doing? I don't care to know what the actual probability is. The actual probability is completely screwed up by all my naive assumptions anyway. I just want to compare this product against this product. These, the, the sums of these values against the sums of these values. Whichever is bigger is the winner. I don't care what the actual value is. I just care which one's bigger. So I've got these weird negative numbers. Doesn't matter. Go over to this one. Put it in as well. LN of the probability. Doink. Copy that down. Get my negative sevens on the ones that the two counts. There you go. Probabilities can be slightly different because I've got a different count of words. That's fine. Uh, total from C, because I added one to everything, got a new count, that becomes my new denominator. So, I'm going to pause here. This is our model. <laughs> We're done. We can now use it. And this is the funny thing about a naive Bayes model. So, where you see these models a lot is in Spam Assassin and other anti-spam products like it. Uh, Bogo Filter would be another. Uh, Paul Graham wrote a wonderful essay on these things called A Plan for Spam, like a decade ago. More than that. Um, a naive Bayes model is nothing more than a database uh, full of tokens, probabilities, or logged probabilities. And that's it. There is no equations or anything. At the end of the day, all it does is tokenize words and, uh, and save counts. And that becomes your model, which is really cool to think about. They're just so stupid. That's why I think that artificial intelligence is kind of a misnomer. Um, people talk about it like it's sort of mystical and magical. And in fact, a lot of AI models are just like, we counted a bunch of stuff and saved the counts. <laughs> Done. But then like, people write articles about them, like, it can judge the emotions of tweets, happy or sad. It's like, eh, it's just, it, has, it has a great memory. AI models, because they're built on computers, just have really good memories if they're supervised. And so it's just found a way to remember stuff better and less biased than you remember things. All right, so we have our probabilities. Here's our test tweets, okay? I have pulled, these tweets were not used in the model, in building the model. Um, and that's the first thing you gotta remember about testing an AI model. You wanna test it out real quick? Do not use your data from earlier, because you built it with that data. So if you test it on that data, it's going to be perfect, or it's going to be nearly perfect. Um, and you'll think you did a really good job, and then you'll use it in real life and be like, wow, this thing sucks. It's because you tested it with the wrong stuff. So you want to have a holdout set or a test set that you can run the model against and be like, okay, how did it do on the test set? So here I've picked 20 words. 10 are about the app. 10 are about something else. So in this one, it's like, what is two-year-old mandrel thinking in this pic? That's probably about like an actual monkey. Here, this one's about, would like to send emails for welcome, comma, password, resets, comma, payment notifications, blah, 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 blah. So this one would be an actual about the app tweet. I pasted in all this cleaning garbage we had from earlier, right? So we've got them cleaned up here. So let's actually run the model on these things. How are we going to do that? I'm going to create a new tab and call it like, run the model, I don't know. And I don't want to copy all this stuff in, so I'm going to copy columns A and B first, paste them over here. I'm going to leave a column C empty, let's just call this our prediction column. So we'll run the model in column C right next to the actual classes and see how we differ, right? And then over here in column, <laughs> What is that? Column J. I'm going to grab these actual tweets that we cleaned. I'm going to put them here in column D. Remember to paste special values. Don't bring the formulas over. Now, that tokenization we did earlier with the spaces and stuff, that was to get all of our words in one column so we could count them. In this case, we're not really going to count everything. We're going to run the model on each individual word. So now we can tokenize using Excel's built-in stuff, which is a lot nicer. So you can use text to columns. 
For me, it's on the data tab in Excel. Um, Windows users, same thing. Go to the data tab, text the columns, highlight the tweets that you just pasted in as values. It's going to bring up this wizard, right? We want to delimit things, so pick delimited, and we're going to split up each column based on spaces because that's what they were delimited on. And what it's going to do is it's going to bust out those tweets into multiple columns. Okay? Now all of a sudden these tweets go across multiple columns. It's really great. Some tweets are longer than others. They're going to have more words. Okay? Now, I'm going to evaluate each word in columns D through whatever according to both models. I'm going to grab their probabilities from those tabs. Okay? So I've already calculated the log of the probability. Now I just need to look it up. And the way that's done in Excel is with a formula called VLOOKUP. So we're going to use VLOOKUP, and then we're going to handle a couple of cases. One, over here we still have words that are length three or less. I want to somehow get rid of them. Two, we're going to have words here like, you know, shit. This may have not appeared before. So we're going to have to handle those two. So we're going to build out this formula piece by piece. All right, this is where things get good. App probabilities. Boink. I'm going to start down on row 24 in column D. And I just want to look up the probability for this word just. OK? So use VLOOKUP. And the way this works is I'm going to give it something to look up. So I'm going to look up the word just. Where am I going to look it up? I'm going to look it up back on my mandrel token probability table. It's right here in column A, maybe. So I'm going to grab this big old table. Mandrel token prob exclamation point. That's a sheet reference. A5 through E827 in my case. So that's the whole table. I'm going to say, here's my token. Here's my table. Look it up. Now, what am I going to bring back? I don't want to bring back column A. I want to bring back the log of the probability from column E. So I'm going to give it a 5, comma 5. That's the column index I want it to return. And then I'm going to give it this, this thing that says false. So the way that works is VLOOKUP says, tell me what to look up. Give me the table. Give me a column to read a value back from. And then the false, you've got to put true or false. It means, do you want an approximate match or do you want the actual match? And in this particular case, I want you to find the actual word. I don't care about words that are kind of close in the alphabet. Give me the actual word. And if it's not there, return an error so that I know it's a rare word. Boom. It returns back the probability, the log of the probability, negative 5. Okay. A couple things about this formula. We want to drag it around for it to calculate other words besides the word in D2. But this table here does not move. It is A5 through E827 all the time. So put dollar signs in front of the A, in front of the 5, in front of the E, and in front of the A27. That means this table, when I copy it around, do not move that table. That table should just stay right where it is all the time. OK? So now I can copy this around. I don't know where these tweets are going to end, but it's probably like right there. Right? Yeah. And then I've got 20 of them. So I'm going to copy it down 20 cells. So that's row 43 here. And you'll see I get all kinds of errors. So where am I getting errors? This word here returns an error. Why? Well, the word any is three characters or less. We dropped it. It can't find it. So a couple of things we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the length. Let's go back to this cell. If len of d2 less than or equal to 3, let's just put a 0 there, because we're summing these things up, right? So a 0 is essentially just ignore it. Give it a 0. Where else are we getting errors? Let's take a look. 
copy this across and just see what happens. Maybe we can figure it out. I'm going to copy it. Oh, I'm just going to drag it over through column AI and then I'm going to double click it. Okay. We've also got situations like here's an NA. What is that? How many cells down is that? Like 11 cells down. Beets, as in the root vegetable, is giving back an error, but it's more than three letters long. So why is that? It's because in our training data, we've never seen the word beets before, right? So let's give it a probability. How do we do this? Wrap the whole thing in if error. So if there's an error, I'm going to give it a value. And what value am I going to give it? Well, back here, if we look at this token probability for Mandrill, we found that the count was 2410. I'm going to give it 1 out of 2410, but I'm going to log that, right? So, if error, give it a value, give it log of 1 divided by 2410. Done. And so now, these rare words for Mandrill also get a probability, or a logged probability. And there we go. We've now evaluated every word in every tweet. And we can sum them up. This would be the same as taking the product of all of those probabilities that we had originally. We're going to sum the logs. If we then took this sum and exponentiated, so e to the this sum, we get back our probabilities, right? Super tiny. Okay, so what do we need to do an evaluation? We need to do the same thing, but we need to hit the other table. And then we're going to see which value is bigger, and whichever value is bigger, that one gets the prediction. All right? So, other probabilities. Probability spelling. Okay. So, here's my original formula. What do I need to change in it? A couple of things. If we go to this other token probability thing, what can we see? Same columns, A through E, different rows, right? We go down from, in mine, and, and this may be different in Windows, or you may have a slightly different sheet, that's fine. I'm starting it. A5, I'm going down through E810. Also, my count here in the bottom is 2027, a slightly different count. Okay? So we need to fix all that. I'm going to calculate, I'm just going to grab this formula, and I'm actually going to highlight the text up in the formula bar and just copy it there, like a, a normal text copy. Okay? I'm just going to paste it right here so that it, it just looks exactly the same. But now, I'm going to change Mandrill to reference this other sheet called uh, Other Token Prob in mine. I'm going to change this from 827 to be row 810, because that was the end of the table. And my denominator here, I think, was 2027. I think that's all the changes that need to be made. And we get a probability. Yes. I have. So the ones in the test set here? Yeah. Because I'm looking them up on the table, the add ones are already incorporated in those probabilities. Right? The only ones where it's not would be the ones I've never seen before. And that's why they get a 1 out of 2027 in this particular case. They should get a 0, because I've never seen them before. Oh, the total count. Yeah, so you can do that too if you wanted. Um, one of the issues there is you don't know how many rare words there are because you're kind of processing things in stream. And so hopefully it doesn't shift that denominator too much, but you can play games with the denominator. Right. Yeah. So that could be the case. And it could be that you could do things like only use rare words that appear in one of the two models, right? And don't look at rare words that have, you've 
like that don't appear anywhere and just don't ignore them because they're going to be kind of the same. So you can play games like that, and you can play games with the denominator too. We are not. And that's the cool thing about Naive Bayes. It's pretty robust the games you can play like that. You can do smoothing in a lot of different ways as well. Uh, this add one smoothing is just one possibility. All right, so I've copied it down through the 20 tweets. We've got our probabilities. I'm going to sum them up. Our logged probabilities here. So now what have I done? I've evaluated each tweet according to it being an app or an other tweet. How do I make a prediction? It's called the maximum a posteriori rule. All I'm going to do is I'm going to say whichever one is bigger, that's what you are. So if, in this particular case, I'm looking at the first tweet, if app is bigger than other, you're an app. Otherwise, you're another. Where's my error? Am I good? Copy it down. Look at that. We get 19 out of 20 right. It's pretty good. I mean, we did nothing, right? We took 150 example tweets from both sides of the house. We tokenized them up. We counted them in pivot tables. We turned those into probabilities. We logged them. We tokenized some new tweets. And we evaluated each word without respect to how the words may be related. That's the naive part. And yet, when we just see which value comes out higher, 19 out of 20 tweets were classified appropriately. And what's interesting here is you can actually kind of skew this a little bit, right? You could say like, oh, rather than looking at like straight, which one's higher, if I cared about false positives or false negatives or something, I could kind of skew it. Like, oh, subtract out this much from this side of the house or this much from this side of the house to like, I would rather get some non-mandrel tweets in my mandrel tweet bucket. So maybe subtract out just a little bit from one side to make that happen. We can actually look at the one we got wrong here. It's the 19th one. What does that one say? What is two-year-old mandrel, JJ, thinking in this pick? So a lot of those words get dropped, like is, JJ, in. This and pick probably don't have a lot of stuff. Well, pick gets dropped. This probably doesn't have a lot of stuff associated with it. The actual link is going to be a link that we haven't seen. You get just sort of a lot of vague words here, right? It probably has never seen the word two-year-old before, because that's pretty specific. So we would immediately read that as humans and say, oh, well, of course it's not talking about the app. Two-year-old is a living thing, probably. It's probably talking about an actual monkey, right? But the model's probably never seen that word before. So it's just, it's going to assign some default probability to it on both sides. So this would be one case where the model is just stupider than you. Mm-hmm. Down. Let's see if I can actually like hide some stuff. Hide the 19th one. Hide hide. Now we can actually look at what's happening here. So we can see some of the stuff that's, that's getting zeroed out. We can see what's getting the default probabilities here. And you'll, see, you'll know what kind of the default probabilities are because they'll just get repeated over and over again. So it looks like it's this 7.78 for the top one and the 7.61 for this one. If you look at these totals, they're actually quite close, aren't they? And so it just kind of leaned over the edge to one side. And if you look at, it's, it's kind of cool to actually look at the ones that are resoundingly one way or the other to kind of know, okay, those were 61 and 64. Let's look at one that's like resoundingly mandrel. Like here's http slash slash mandrel.com, right? This token here, what, what one is this, number eight? Five, six, seven, eight. It's probably a pretty good token, right? It's in the sixes as opposed to sevens. So probably look at that. It's negative. 34 for this versus 
it's going to be the eighth one down in the other section, negative 69. So that would be a case where it's resoundingly about the app, because that difference is huge versus this negative 61 versus negative 64. So you could also put like a gray area in there, like, hey, if the things you're comparing are within some percentage of each other, if you, if you wanted an other bucket, you could have an other bucket. So a lot of applications like this, they, like spam filtering, they don't have an other bucket. But you could. Um, if, if you wanted to use this at a, at a business, uh, you could, for instance, have, like, a, like, let's say I was classifying spam or something. And I had some examples of, like, I don't know if this user is bad or not. I could have a team somewhere. I could maybe outsource this problem where I actually gave them hey, here's some, all of our other bucket where it's too close to call, we're actually going to have a human evaluate it. You could do that, right? So that you had sort of better precision. So you can actually use AI models in tandem with real people if you can only get such, you know, so much good accuracy and then you've got a weird gray area. All right, so that is supervised AI.